Our next speaker is Chu Chen from Beijing University of Post and Telecommunications. His paper is entitled An Enchanted Collaborative Filtering with Flexible Item Popularity Control for Recommender System Copyright. Uh, can the speaker from Curry uh, please come by me, please? studies about recommender systems for you. And the title of my paper is An Enhanced Collaborative Filtering with Flexible Item Popularity Control for Recommender Systems. So let's begin. First, let, first let's see some introductions. Uh, with the rapid growth of worldwide and the emerging of various internet applications such as uh, social, net social networks and e-commerce, mass information has been created and stored. <coughs> and that makes it difficult for users to obtain their target information easily and quickly. So, recommender systems are developed to tackle this informa information overload problem. And the core of a recommender system is the recommendation algorithm. Uh, in the past two decades, uh, there, are, um, uh, there are various recommend recommendation algorithms uh, have been proposed and can be mainly divided into two categories. Uh, the first one is content-based methods. Which relies on which rely on the uh, feature information of item and the user, <clears throat> but unfortunately, these kinds of information are hard to collect collect in some practical situations. And the other one is collaborative filtering, which relies on the uh, user behavior information, which is very easy to collect and extracted from a lock server, uh, server server locks at a very low expense. So, uh, it has been widely studied and uh, uh, applied in practical situations. However, uh, there are some effects of collaborative filtering and one of them is popularity bias. Which is to say that uh, collaborative filtering recommender systems tend to recommend uh, very popular items. Uh, I think every, every everybody here knows a book is very, which is very famous. That is Harry Potter, and there there was a time uh, that it appeared in almost everyone's recommendation list uh, in some online bookstore. Uh, uh, in fact, that not everyone likes this book. It is recommended just because it is very popular. Uh, however that over recommending popular items is sometimes very inefficient. Uh, on the one hand, uh, they are not related to uh, users' particular preference, and other, on the other hand, uh, these popular items are sometimes very uh, famous items, and uh, uh, it is possible that the users have already known these items, so they have made some uh, conscious decisions. <clears throat> so, recommend, recommending this kind of uh, items may not lead to additional item consuming. So, we are very curious about how the item popularity impacts the recommendation process. And we look into a typical collaborative filtering, which is an item based collaborative filtering which is shortly short called the IB. And we found that the problem arises in the uh, item similarity that is used in IB. And then we discovered that uh, popular items tend to have larger similarities with other items. So it is uh, more likely to be re recommended. And then we want to introduce some item popularity control into the item similarity to fix this problem. And then we found that some traditional similarities have already contained it, 
but uh, the item popularity factor in those similarities are uh, always in a fixed form and we believe that in different situations uh, the item popularity control should be different so it should be uh, flexible so we design a new similarity uh, making the item popularity factor uh, flexible and uh, using this new similarity we propose our new ECF and then we conduct some experiments to evaluate the performance of the ECF. So uh, then let's see some details about collaborative filtering. Collaborative filtering can be mainly divided as memory, the memory based and the model based. And the memory based can be further divided as the user based and the item based. And the model based methods are made, made up of some a matrix decomposition method such as SVD or uh, SVD++ which is very famous, became famous in the Netflix competition and in this paper we focus, we focus on the IB we focus on IB and IB is just based on a very simple rationale that uh, uh, people may, may like the items that is similar to the items that he had already liked. So, uh, IB just recommend the uh, items that is very similar, the most similar to the items that the user already liked from the candidate items. And then, kinds of user behavior information can be used into IB. And in this paper, we use this kind of information. Uh, we use the records of which item each, each user likes, each user likes as uh, the input information. And this kind of information can be modeled as, um, as an unweighted and uh, undirected bipartite network uh, like this. And one node set represents the users, and the other represents the item node, item sets. And if a user loves an item, there will be an edge between the corresponding nodes. And this bipartite network can be further mapped into an adjacent matrix like this. Well, if user, if user, if user, if user J likes item I, then the element AIJ in this matrix uh, will be set to 1, otherwise 0. And uh, as you can see, in the network, uh, item 2 is so special because it is loved by all the three users. So it is a very popular item. Uh, at the same time, and consequently, it has a large degree of 3. So we use the degree of an item node to represent the popularity of an item and develop it as a K item. Uh, since the item similarity plays a very important role in uh, IB, so let's see something about the item similarity. One of the basic tra traditional similarities is cosine similarity, which is defined as this. And there are some other similarities, uh, extended similarities, that arrange from the cosine similarity. And the, one of them is the um, this modified cosine similarity, which is defined as like this. As you can see, that both the two similarities have, have already contained the popularity factor, but they are all, both in a fixed form, and we believe that it should be flexible as explained just now. So we propose a new similarity to making the item popularity factor flexible, uh, as this. Uh, Actually, it, is, it can be treated as a, a generalization of the second similarity. And if the, if the beta, if the, if the beta is set to the fixed minus, then there's a point 0.5. It, it just equals the second similarity. And just the beta, the three parameter beta, make the uh, item, pro, um, item popularity factor in the similarity flexible. Uh, this it is tunable. And let's see some metrics that we use in this paper to evaluate our uh, uh, perform recommendation performance. 
uh, the first the first one is ranking score, and it evaluates uh, it, it evaluates that if the target candidate items have been given a strong recommendation, and uh, uh, it is, it is the smaller the better. Also, we also we use this metric to determine the parameter R for the beta in the DCF. Uh, we just uh, we just use the R by the beta that is corresponding to the minimum R as the optimal parameters. Uh, well, first we search for the R by the beta by a, a simple brute force method, and then we come up with a great method that is much less time consuming. And however, uh, uh, in some practical situations, only less limited recommendation can this can be displayed to users. So we use another four metrics that that is suitable for this case. And this, the first one is an accuracy uh, metric, which is precision, and it is just the proportion of the uh, target uh, items of the recommendation list. And obviously, it is larger the better. And the last three is our uh, diversity uh, metrics. Uh, the first one is handling distance. Yes, uh, it evaluates the difference between uh, recommendation lists uh, of different users, and it is uh, the larger the better. Uh, the second one is inner similarity i. It evaluates the similarities of the items of a, in the same recommendation list of a single user, and it is the smaller and the better. Uh, the last one is just the average item popularity of the, all the items that we recommend to all the users. Uh, of course, uh, it, of course, it is just a, a brief introduction to the five metrics and uh, uh, specific definitions and uh, explanations can be found in my uh, full paper. So then, let's see something about the experiment. We conduct our experiment on two real-world movie data sets, movie lens and Netflix, by splitting them into a training sets and a testing set. And then, there, uh, this is the uh, parameter estimation. Uh, uh, as you can see, this is the uh, value of R at different R and beta for for the two data sets, and we just pick out the uh, R and beta that is that are core corresponding to the minimum uh, R, uh, which are displayed like this, and uh, using the uh, parameters we found just now, we perform a, a tenfold cross validated cross validation to get the average results, and uh, which is which are uh, displayed in the following two tables for the two data sets respectively. Uh, we can see that uh, both for the two data sets, uh, our ECF outperforms the other three baselines on all the five metrics. So it, it proves that the flexibility uh, of the item popularity control really takes effect since uh, uh, the two of the three baselines has already contained the item popularity factor, but just in a fixed form. And our uh, ECF uh, uh, contains this uh, item popularity factor, factor in a flexible form. And then we investigate the the relationship between different item popularity control and uh, recommendation performance by varying beta with a fixed R bar. Mm. Uh, it should be pointed out that uh, decreasing beta means strengthening item popularity control. And let's see the results. As you can see, uh, with the decrease of beta, at, at the beginning, the precision increases. But after a certain value, uh, about minus 0 0.8, it, uh, it decreases rapidly. And let's see the
the relationship between uh, of beta between and of beta and the, uh, the diversity performance, and you can see that uh, it shows a similar relationship with the decrease of beta at the first uh, at the beginning. The diversity performance can improve, but after a uh, uh, after some value, maybe minus um, 0.9, uh, the, the diversity performance decreases or just uh, not change. So, we can make some conclusions that uh, item popularity control really takes effect and uh, improves the overall recommendation performance at the same time. And the beta or the extent of the item popularity control should be flexible and chosen carefully to achieve the best performance. Um, okay, that, that's it. A very easy to understanding paper and method. Uh, thank you. Thank you. 